This is a story of control. People need to be controlled by their peers. People need to be explicit about what they do. Everything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> and if you think about it more, it's actually whole Wikipedia is a whole system of control. Everything is controlled. IPs in particular, of course. IPs and new editors, since they are marked red, will be subject to control without even knowing it. Uh, lots of people treat it as a, as a typical sport. Uh, following IPs edits, new newcomers edits, they will make their purpose to, to see what the new edits are. Recent changes patronic is actually something that you can prove yourself uh, if you want to become an admin. You, you go, you, you become a recent changes patroller, you get a nice badge, or a recent change patroller. It's actually a little policeman with, with a baton, uh, <laughs> which actually, well, uh, gives, the, gives the good impression. It goes to this extent that there are even pages advising you, you know what, take it easy, IPs are humans too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, apparently people need these reminders, but um, if you have a look at the, at the, at the larger picture, are not harmful here in the study. 80% of new editors' contributions are not harmful. So apparently, IPs are not only really human, but they are only mostly harmless. <laughs> 40 percent are, are even clearly valuable, right? Well, 40 percent is not as much, but again, if you think about it, 60 percent is maybe not contributing, but at least goodwill to some extent. The rate of rejection, however, of all good faith new editors first contributions have been rising steadily. So we are more and more rejecting even good faith, non-harmful contributions. Also, 28% of editors feel looked down upon by the more experienced people. This is from the Editor Survey Report 2011. What's that? Uh, yeah, so uh, this is what people feel. People feel controlled, people feel looked down upon. So I'm, I'm trying to think why and what are the reasons for this and what are also the other sources and other means of social control on Wikipedia. Uh, all this is definitely summing up to some growing alienation, the divide, us and them. This is all we've been, we've been definitely hearing on Wikipedia, the, the very notion of admin mafia, as it's called on some weekends, or, or the cabal, as it's called on, on the others, uh, comes down to us versus them mentality. But this, this is way beyond crazy. I mean, that on some Wikipedias, there are discussions, should we even allow non-public mailing lists? And on some Wikipedias, on some projects, it's, it's very seriously supported. No non-public list should be allowed. This is a very... Uh, serious thing. For example, in English Wikipedia, as far as I understand, a lot of lists are made public and no non-public communication is allowed. What does it come down to? It, it comes down basically to the social control. Everything you say should be registered. Communication off week is not encouraged. If you if you communicate to someone on uh, IRC, it's sort of okay, but you'd better use a talk page because there is a, you can be tracked. Whatever you say will stay on the system. Again, a story of control, a story of tracking whatever you do. And I think there is a sort of a dissonance in this egalitarian discourse, and still here is that people experience. If people feel that they are looked down upon, if people feel they are sort of oppressed by those who are in the know, then maybe it's not as egalitarian as we would like it to be. Uh, I would say that we, we've driven the sort of concerted control to the extreme. Concerted control is a notion in which peers control peers. So we don't need a manager, right? We don't like hierarchies. But so what? Hierarchies are not the only way to manage people. What we instituted is a system in which peers look at peers all the time to the extent that you cannot really break the circle of being controlled. RFAs are very often called running the gauntlet. And it's not only in English Wikipedia, on Polish Wikipedia as well, on many other Wikipedias you will observe that the ratio of new administrators is slowing down. Maybe an orange show this on a, on a very persuasive graph. It is it's, it's declining all the time. Um, and it's not just the English Wiki, on Polish Wikipedia for the same process. Uh, same goes for bureaucrats, admins. People are reluctant to come 
uh, to even enter the, the competition, to even enter the RFA. And even if they do, also the ratio of successful RFAs goes down. So not only there are more candidates, there are also less people who are successful. And I, I would imagine that people who open their RFAs are confident they, they stand a chance. Uh, patrolling, talk pages, recent changes, everything is official. I've already covered that, so sorry for the repetition. It comes down to a bit, basically an opticon. You're, you're like in a prison, like everything is registering the camera. Imagine a situation in a regular organization. If, if you work in a corporation, everything you say, you have a coffee break, and you have to use a recorder. Everything you say is recorded, everybody can access what you've said. This is the sort of situation we are, and because we keep it on Wikipedia, every action is basically what you say. You do not you do, do, do anything else, you cannot express any other way. So if we, if we say it's, we are for freedom of speech, I would say not really. I mean, freedom of speech is a very nice notion, and it's not, to some extent that freedom of speech is supported by our movement, but if we, if we treat freedom of speech as freedom of expression, being feeling comfortable with being able to say what you want to say, I would say Wikipedia is probably not the best engine to do that. On Wikipedia, most of stuff you want to say will have to be said with keeping in mind that somebody will reveal it, will, will dug it out at some point in the future. If you think about it, most dialogues on Wikipedia are semi-official. You always have to bear in mind that people will dig it out later. So my, my conclusions are, uh, but it's not very, it's not that the bright future has, has, has already gone. Uh, when was the last time you remember the ignore all rules was successfully involved? We're accruing rules, we're accruing bureaucracy, the amount of control is increasing. And if you just, uh, just to amuse you, a little bit of uh, summary how many other rules are there on the, on the English Wikipedia. We have 50 policies on English Wikipedia, about 40 on the Polish Wikipedia. 450 guidelines and behavioral essays, more than 1,000 regulatory documents. Some of these go into hundreds of thousands of words. You can't possibly expect anybody to even remember there is a policy about something or a regulatory document about something. Even just the 50 core policies total to 150,000 words, which is actually, by the way, much longer than my book. Uh, so I would say that bureaucratic control uh, sort of has to substitute for the for the hierarchical management. We, we, we all hate we all hate management hierarchies. But again, organizations have to adjust, and our organization has adjusted by increasing peer control and increasing the control through rules creation. And also, unfortunately, as a side effect, since we do not have very formal layers of hierarchy, we are creating informal hierarchy. People who know the rules are in fact higher in hierarchy. If you, if you come into a dispute with a newcomer, the first thing you should do if you want to win an argument, invoke five, six policies with blanks. Why don't you read this, this, and that, and then come back later? That's, that, we all do this. I mean, it's only natural. We, well, we sort of try to culture them into our policies. But again, why do we have that many policies anyway? Uh, of course, this confirms the, the sociological law of iron law of oligarchy. Oligarchies are created by, with time in organizations, but we do not really take countermeasures. We have these policies that we are not a bureaucracy. Bullshit, we are a bureaucracy. As long as we claim we are not, we won't be able to do anything about it. Unregistered anonymous editors contribute just as much as one quarter of the content, but they only create one. 20 of the regulations, as, as Richard Zapata and Alan Sarah show, which means that there's a huge amount of people who make really valuable contributions but have nothing to say in our community, nothing at all. Uh, and finally, I believe that these results re deter new users, obviously. I mean, if you are a newcomer, you don't know the rules, you don't really know what is going on. Because if the bar is really hard to even enter, uh, than he wants. And we fossilize the system of domination power because you know the cabal does exist. The cabal doesn't exist because we gang up on people. That's not the way it works. The cabal exists because we let the rules uh, accumulate. 
Uh, with this, I think I'm ready to uh, address any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Because 
they are really guidelines. There, there is no mandatory following of these guidelines. But these guidelines offer some other kind of power, just like uh, the power of the tradition. If you go against these guidelines that are defined by the community, you are going against the traditions, against the behavior. It's like a, a traditional domination that then has no period and it's really, really present in the Absolutely, and notability guidelines. I mean, for, for certain categories of people, you have notability guidelines. And immediately after they are introduced, they become institutionalized. Some things which are optional in the guidelines, one year later it will not be optional. You know, you will be linked to, you know what, the guideline says it's probably this and that, so it has to be this and that. Um, I did notice that you used the metaphor of the panopticon. I'm actually reading through my paper, which I'm presenting tomorrow. That's the reason why I'm here. Um, and the analogy that I used probably, um, was not necessarily a panopticon, but rather a house of glass. Given that the given that what the, how, the way Wikipedia works is that it's not that you have one tower that looks over everybody, and then you it you have the perception that you're being monitored, but rather that everybody is monitoring each other. Therefore, um, and if I were to cite my professor, uh, my philosophy professor, carefully uh, correctly here, he says that disciplinarity is at its most effective when you know that you're not even then you're not even aware that you're being watched. So um, given your research, would you say then that the disciplinary society that, that Foucault alludes to, that we currently live in today, has, um, and which I presume Wikipedia and the Wikimedia community has tried to fight back against, has permeated the community, and if so, to what extent? Well, I mean, obviously we have lots of disciplinary measures, right? I mean, yes. it's, it's not just that we are watching each other. I mean, if you draw on Foucault, Foucault would say that there is no, you cannot speak of insanity case if there are no uh, madhouses. If you cannot yes. really institutionalize somebody and put them behind bars, no, no prisons. And in this case, of course, a glass house is a nice notion, but this is a glass house in which people can come and throw you out. So there's lots of disciplinary measures, and I, it would be interesting, by the way, to find out what are the proportions of people of people who are blocked or banned from Wikipedia. I, I don't know data about it, but to watch how that will change over time. Yeah, let's let's combine three last questions because we're running out of time. Okay, at, at the risk of continuing the academic discussion about Foucault, uh, I want to bring it to a very concrete question about uh, these issues that we've been talking about. So how many of these issues do you think are architectural, that are because of we are, that media wiki is a system in which everyone can view every other, everyone else's actions, and how many of them do you think are sort of cultural, ideological, these sort of ideas about how people think they should relate uh, to each other? So, we, so if we want to change it, how much architecture do we have to change? This, 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 is, this is a, a, a short one I will address it immediately. I think most of them are not architect architectural. I think it's mostly cultural. Just the fact that you're able to see changes does not actually have anything to do with what can be oversighted, but which is by common agreement, what can be crossed out, what can be reverted. You know, the layers of actions that you're allowed to uh, is cultural, it's not technical. Actually, just continue, Sandra, I think, because I think also mean it's cultural, and I think you're, the title of your talk is wrong. It's not Big Brother is watching you, it's Big Brothers are watching. It's like, <laughs> it's like I, I don't like the panopticon because like everybody, everything is panoptical these days. I think this is a village of really single-minded people, and everybody is a preacher. But once we decided that our religion is not having preachers, so the problem is everybody was a preacher. So now we have to put our religion into <coughs> words. And these are not words of wisdom, these are words of social, con social cultural control, which is destroying every open village. This is not an open society, and I think this is one of the biggest problems that Wikipedia has. It really destroys any aspect of having an open and culture full of empathy. And I really would like to, do you have any, uh, at least uh, ideas, how we could how we could focus on that cultural problem, <laughs> which I think is really uh, destroying the, the the possible growth beyond 
the people who, who've been in Wikipedia forever now. I mean, this is really, for me, one of the, the main problems we have. It's very nice, very nice presentation, very polite, very diplomatic, but I think we should talk a little bit more hard on that. I totally agree with you, and I think, you know, uh, not, I don't want to sound nostalgic or anything, but in the, in the beginning, well, probably a different kind of people, of course, have entered Wikipedia, but the, the rules were much more flexible. And even now on Polish Wikipedia, if I tried to ignore, uh, to, to introduce the ignore all rules uh, rule, I would probably be blocked. And I'm pretty sure on English Wikipedia, many users would try to invoke a IAR, in many cases they would be blocked. <coughs> Too many rules. We, we do not really have a policy or a project which would consciously try to reduce the number of uh, bureaucratic creed that has accrued. And this probably could help. Because the, reducing the number of rules would also send a signal that we reduce the amount of unnecessary administrative peer control. And who's doing that? We have no hierarchy. Well, of course, if we started a project and if people thought it's useful, then and it could take off. I have no idea. Yeah, uh, do you have some data about how often the rules are being seen more in both? Could you repeat it a second? Yeah, do you have some uh, info about how often these rules are being enforced or how often they are being already violated in school? And uh, do you think that would be used as a measure to deprecate rules that are being enforced? It, I, I have no data about it. It would be extremely interesting to find out which rules are often invoked, which aren't, which are broken, most open, but then it's extremely difficult to, to search data like that. We have I, I have no idea how How would you even know that this particular rule was invoked in discussion well, without uh, limits? In English, they do an entry instruction way. Sometimes they don't do an instruction way, so you can still get back to the problem. And how many times they're mentioned the top pages linked to instruction pages? Again, but people mention rules without invoking them. So. Yeah, but they usually do pretty structured. <laughs> awesome. So there is a final question. And just about IAR, actually, a specific one. There was a, a new paper uh, last year, some research on uh, people citing IAR in deletion discussions. And they showed that, uh, in general, when people bring IAR into the conversation, it uh, uh, skews the discussion away from deletion. Um, so, it, so they're arguing that, that, you know, kind of like, messing up the formal process, like getting people to rethink, you know, uh, what's going on and whether the rules apply, actually speaking to people for the people and There's some really good uh, research and policy. Very good point, and it would be interesting to find out how it's changed over time. Because yeah. I, I, they are There's some really good research on that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot. Go ahead.